black heroes have greatly influenced our community of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Working for inclusion and equity for all. In this unique Black History Month series, brought to you by Family Fuse and the Black Council of Windsor-Essex, we highlight some of those leaders and pioneers, shedding light on their contributions and the legacy upon which we stand. Today, we introduce Lana Talbot. Lana Talbot is a woman of many artistic talents, drawing, painting, designing, sewing, flower arranging, creating one-of-a-kind heritage dolls, acting, and singing. She studied interior design and architectural drawing at St. Clair College in the interior design program headed by Patricia Neely McCurdy. Lana was born, as she likes to say, when the world was shaken as the atomic bomb was dropped in Nagasaki. And she resides in the same house that she grew up in, in Windsor, Ontario. She currently is Vice President of the Artists of Color, but her passion is Sandwich First Baptist Church, where she is a longtime member who volunteers as the office clerk, choir director, and heritage coordinator. She can often be found conducting tours of the historic Underground Railroad era building for visitors from all over North America and beyond. Her goal? is to create an Underground Railroad Museum at Sandwich First Baptist Church to honor the ancestors who forged a path to freedom. Lana was present at the famous Martin Luther King Jr. speech in Washington that ended with, I have a dream on August 28, 1963. She was just 18 years old when she traveled all the way from Windsor, Ontario to attend that historic march on Washington by herself. She is currently treasurer of the Black Council of Windsor-Essex. There were many uh, instances that caught me to make me want to do for people, to volunteer. Uh, first off, my roots, my heritage. I was blessed to live with my great-grandmother who was born in 1856 and at the age of 109 made her transition. But previous to that, she would sit us, uh, around in a semicircle and tell us all sorts of stories. As she knew Harriet Tubman, she knew Sojourner Truth. And I used to always ask my mother, what's so special about Sandwich First Baptist Church? And she says, oh, don't you know? That's where they hid the enslaved people, but we didn't use the phraseology enslaved. That's where they hid the slaves under the floor. Under the floor. Like, as a child, can you fathom that? Under the floor? Huh. So when I go down in my basement, I can see there's a, where the floor is, there's like just about maybe two feet, and then there's the ceiling downstairs. And that is when I said, wow, those people didn't have very much space. And then you grow older and you start understanding things and you start seeing things. And then you start saying, for their life, they would fit anywhere as they ran or whatever they had to do. I also remember being mistreated as a, a student, a youthful student. Seven years old, I got the strap because I was late. Hmm, Miss Bosworth, Victoria School. Was I happy about it? No. And I think that's one of the reasons I continue to be late. <laughs> you want to strap a seven-year-old? And we had the razor strap then. And we were not particularly cared for in school. Grade three, um, my... Miss Farr, my grade three teacher, uh, and I always remember Margaret Ann Pesey. Margaret Ann Pesey, her mother had passed away, and Margaret Ann Pesey was an artist like me, and we all could draw at uh, eight years old. We could draw, we could make people look like people. Uh, not stick people, but people. And uh, she was doing a picture of a man climbing up the Swiss Alps. Now, <clears throat> I didn't understand at eight years old how she could ask Margaret Ann and not include me. 
uh, I wasn't included. And there were one, two, three, four black male students. They felt the same way I felt, but I would never destroy a piece of art. Well, someone took a straight pin and wrote and made an X in the picture because they saw their fellow schoolmate being misused. And like I said, as I got older, I could understand that Margaret Ann Pesey's mother would, had passed away and they were trying to make her maybe feel good, uh, but whatever. If the teacher was thinking, she would have thought, if I do this, and Lana's an artist too, why should I not? I should include her in doing something, even if it's just to pin the paper up and to add a little something at the bottom of the painting or the picture. She didn't do it because, number one, she didn't care about my feelings. Now I'm nine years old and I'm in Mr. Gall's class. Mr. Gall, and this is the truth, and I, and I have to tell the truth. He would perform in blackface. And I can still close my eyes. I don't even have to close my eyes, but in my, my memory, I can still see him and other teachers saying, uh, oh, you did a good job. You did a good job Friday night or Saturday evening. You did a good job. And they're all laughing. And I could never understand what they were laughing about. It's because of his performance in blackface. Now I'm 10 and in grade five now. I know I can draw. I know I can paint. I know I could do all those things. I failed art. Miss Boyle, Miss Boyle was the art teacher. And she'd go around <laughs> biting her thumb because she was so upset. And she mistreated all the black kids. Not just me, all of us. So she failed me. Grade six, Miss Dixon wonderful teacher. Nobody liked Miss Dixon but me. But she was my friend and she always would uh, tell me things to do, uh, how to do different things. She cared about me. Grade seven, Miss McLean, same thing. Miss McLean's room was uh, maybe 20 feet from Miss Dixon's room and they were good friends. Well, she treated me nicely. I had no problem. Then I come to grade eight, grade eight, and everybody talked about Miss Golden. What a teacher. Oh, she was this, she was that. And I could not stand that woman. I didn't like her. Uh, she had this thing about um, saying to me, oh, do you know why the student teachers keep you? That's because you're sex rich. I said, no, that's not that. But that's what, that's what she did. I could tell you all the little stories, like Little Black Sambo that we had, all the, the negative things, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and when the N-word come up, how it was always one of the black students that had to read that passage. No, we, we refused, and at nine years old, we stood up and walked out of the classroom. That's why I am the way I am today. Uh, I had one black teacher, Mr. Lemon, in grade 10, and he would come to me and he'd say, Lana, why do so many teachers dislike you? I said, because I just don't let them put and say anything they want to say to me, or I don't watch and I refuse to let them abuse other people because of who they are. And it's just a struggle. It has always been a struggle. And that's what makes me who I am today, like, you know, <laughs> 65 years later, or, or that many years or more. And this is how you feel. So you see, these are the things from kindergarten all the way to grade 10. These are the different times and things that happen that make you, that build this resistance up inside of you. And you say, why am I being treated this way? So yeah, that's, that's what started me, my grandma and my mama. And my mother always told me, you have nothing to be ashamed of.
I'm proud to be uh, the mother of Sean Duran Talbot Wims and Stephanie Jean May Houck. No, Stephanie Jean May Talbot Houck. I am blessed to have two children. Um, I'm blessed to have five grandchildren, Ashley, Derricka, Charlie, uh, Tracy, and Caleb. And I am truly blessed to have two great grandchildren, Carter James Phoenix Hermson and Jayla Raven Talbot Wims. I am very proud of those things. Other than that, I've done some exciting things. Never knew how I would get where I got, but got there because there's a God that I serve that does marvelous things. And I am not ashamed of my Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. When you talk about things that you can accomplish, those are the things that I wanted to accomplish. Nothing more. Be strong. Remember who you are. You have no fear. God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but one of sound mind. When you have a sound mind, you know, you can shake mountains and be confident in everything that you do. People might look at you and say, oh, look at her, doesn't, or look at him. Look, at doesn't she think she's so-and-so or doesn't he think he's so-and-so? Um, just look at them. Oh, they use the wrong phraseology. Who cares? Did the message get across? That's the important thing. Hold on to what you have and don't be afraid. Don't let teachers tell you what you can and cannot do. No, and if you need help, ask for it. And you know what? We as elders in our community, we definitely need to take and uh, start shadowing with younger people, teaching them the things that we know so that they can, when we're gone, and, and when you're an elder, we know there's more behind us than there is in front of us, but we still go on and teach, keep teaching the youth how to become very important if it's only to themselves. You don't have to worry about uh, this one's approval or that one's approval. It's not about that. It's about standing and believing and telling your truth your story, because each of us have a story to tell. No fear, no fear. When you have no fear, you can, you can fly like an eagle.